Hello and welcome to another episode of Physical Forever Games. I'm your host, Carrie, and today I'll be walking you through my strategy guide for the Wii U eShop closure. I wasn't really planning on making this video, I thought about it. However, someone in the comments on my 3DS eShop closure video requested it, and I'm here to make it happen. So, like my 3DS video, I'm going to divide the games that I think you should consider downloading before the Wii U eShop closes into categories. Here, I'm only going to use four categories. Those categories are first, Wii U eShop exclusive games. These are games that were only available on the Wii U, and furthermore, were only available on the eShop for the Wii U. Then I have games that were available only on the Wii U eShop if you wanted them on the Wii U. However, these games are actually available on other consoles as well. If you own the other consoles, maybe you already have these games. The third category is games that are free to play. Many of these games are free to start playing. However, they will require purchase of Amiibo or in-game DLC purchases in order to fully flush out the game. And the fourth category I have for you today is games that are both physical and digital for the Wii U. However, buying them physically is extremely expensive and you'll save quite a bit of money if you buy them digitally. I consciously chose not to include games that are on the virtual console here. I know there's good reason to play these games on your Wii U. Your Wii U has natively an HDMI cable. You can play it on your current gen TV. Um, that said, these games are also available on many other consoles. You might, might have already downloaded them on your 3DS. You might already own them physically. There may be games that interest you in the virtual console. However, I don't believe that that is part of this discussion and preparing for the eShop the e closure. I'd like to focus on some other games today, so I hope you can forgive me for that. So, we'll get started with games that are exclusive to the Wii U eShop. And first, we'll start with Pokemon Rumble U. This game is the sequel to Pokemon Rumble Blast that came out for the 3DS. It'll cost you $17.99. And whether that's worth it to you is up to a couple things. First, you gotta know that this game is mainly a button masher. You're mainly pressing the A button, using a Pokemon that looks like it's made out of Legos to battle many other Pokemon that look like they're made out of Legos in an arena type setting. However, this game does have some historical significance to Nintendo since it was the first time on the Wii U that Nintendo utilized NSC communication. And what I mean by that is that this game came out in 2013 Amiibo didn't release till 2014, but this game utilized similar technology to Amiibo. If you went to a GameStop at the time that this game came out or the time that the 3DS version was out, you could buy small plastic Pokeballs, and inside of those Pokeballs was a random Pokemon. I was able to pull a Zorark from my Gotcha pod, and if I scanned this Pokemon figurine onto my Wii U tablet, it would actually bring this Pokemon into the game, enabling me to play with him. So at $17.99, whether the gameplay or the history merits buying it is up to you, but I did want to mention that one since Pokemon Rumble U is a separate version from the one on the 3DS and it's only available on the Wii U eShop. The second game on our list is Dr. Luigi. For anyone that's ever played Dr. Mario, you'll instantly recognize this game as largely a reskin of Dr. Mario. However, being on the Wii U, you can actually utilize the tablet to move the pills around in the game and so some people may find that the best way to play this game. Some people love Luigi. This came out in the year of Luigi. So it's historically significant in that way too. Our third game is Pushmo World. There are Pushmo games on other consoles. However, this one will cost you $9.99 and it is exclusive to the Wii U eShop. Very much more of the same, pushing, pulling stairs, that kind of puzzle. But if you like those kinds of things, this might be a game worth picking up. The next game on our list is Art Academy Home Studio. There are a plethora of Art Academy games out there. However, I will say that I think doing this on the Wii U tablet is one of the best ways to do it, both to learn and to engage with art. I think this is a great way to create content, and I think it's a great way to learn. If you don't think that you can make good art on Wii U tablet, you've obviously never played Splatoon. I'm consistently mind blown by the political cartoons and jokes that people are able to put together using the Wii U and then now even on the Switch. So Art Academy Home Studio will cost you $29.99. If you'd like to learn to draw or if you already know and want to do it on your Wii U, this could be a good idea. Then we've got Affordable Space Adventure, which is a 1999 
game and this will enable you to fly around in a little spaceship and you get to use the tablet to control it. For being a third party game, this really makes good use of the tablet controls and I wish we could have seen more of that on the Wii U, but unfortunately the third party support wasn't so robust during that time. Moving along, this game is necess not necessarily the best reviewed, but it might be one worth picking up. It's Cube Life Island Survival. This game is $9.99, and if it's of any interest to you, maybe consider picking up the demo before you commit to the full price. Um, if you don't like it, then you can walk away, but if you do, maybe pick up the full game. A couple other games that are at that $9.99 price point, we've got a Ubisoft game, Cloudberry Kingdom, as well as a Curve Digital game, Stealth Inc. 2, A Game of Clones. We have uh, How to Survive, a survival type game from 505 Games that also makes good use of the pad. This is $14.99 and there's some DLC available. I think all in you'd be looking at about $20 bucks if you wanted to get all the content for that game. The last things on this list are not really games, however they are Wii U eShop exclusives. They were published by Nintendo, and they are Wii U Panorama View, which allows you to zoom in on panoramic images using your Wii U tablet. There are four different versions of this game, all four costing $2. Bird's Eye View, Carnival in Rio, Double Decker Tour, and Kyoto Sightseeing. So if any of those locales or panoramic images sound of interest to you, then you can download them for $2 on the eShop. But wait, before you rush to make that purchase and add funds to your Wii U, you should know that I think most of the content from these games is captured in the screenshots. And if you still want more, there's actually a free demo for this game. Um, and that may satisfy your cravings. But if you want them all, you can get them all for only eight bucks. Now, some of you may be wondering why there's not a couple games on this list. And two of those will be NES Remix 1 and 2. Those specifically were re-released on the NES Remix Pack, which is a physical game for the Wii U. It only cost about 20 bucks and it includes both games. But there's many other games that were remade for the Switch, often as collections or definitive editions, and I just don't think the Wii U is the best place to get them. So I didn't include a lot of those games. Um, and I'm not going to include a list here. So I'm moving along to Wii U and... These are games that are available on other consoles, but if you want them on the Wii U, you can only get them digitally. First, we start with Severed. That is a $14.99 game. Um, this is a game that makes great use of the Wii U tablet through both slashing actions, action adventure type game. Um, and one thing to note on this game, if you also have a 3DS that's connected to the same Nintendo account, you get a free download game, a card for that game as well. So that helps that $14.99 go a little bit further. Moving into our next game, we've got Don't Starve Giant Edition. This one is also $14.99. This game was available on various consoles. However, on Nintendo, you could only get it on the Wii U. Another game in a similar situation is Runner 2 Future Legend of Rhythm Alien. This is a $14.99 game available on many other consoles. However, only available on Nintendo through the Wii U. Moving along, we have a game that you might recognize if you own a Switch, it's Little Inferno. This game was published by Tomorrow Corporation. It's $9.99, and you might recognize it because Super Rare Games actually did a physical press of this game. However, it's only $9.99 on the eShop, so it might be cheaper than buying that Super Rare physical version. Moving along, we've got Octodad, Deadliest Catch. This game is $14.99, also one of those games that's available on quite a few other consoles, um, but only on the Wii U if you want it physically. Then we have a game that was only on the PS3. This is Dungeons and Dragons Chronicles of Mystaria, and it was developed by Capcom. It's Right now it's $2.99, normally $14.99. I'd recommend buying this game at this price point. I think it's pretty fun. I do think Wii U is the best console to play it on. If you like Dungeons and Dragons, you're probably gonna love this game. We got a full price game coming up next. That is Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage 2. This is from Koei Timco America and $49.99, also on many other consoles, but the only Nintendo console you can get this game on is the Wii U. 
Then finally, we have Tori Tori 2 Plus, which is the definitive version of Tori Tori 2. You can also play this game on your PS4, but at $14.99, I don't know that you'll be able to get it much cheaper than it's available on the Wii U eShop. Our third category today is games that are free to start. And the first two games actually involve Amiibo. So first, we have Amiibo Tap, Nintendo's Greatest Bits. This was put out by Nintendo. It's free to download. When you scan an Amiibo, you get a 30 second clip from a NES or SNES game that you can view. This was Nintendo's way of advertising older games to a younger crowd, hopefully exposing them to things they may be interested in. Not sure that it necessarily worked, but it's free, so why not go ahead and download it? It doesn't take up much space. Then we have Mini Mario & Friends Amiibo Challenge. This game similarly uses Amiibo to unlock content, mainly in the form of an avatar in the game. So you scan in a Yoshi Amiibo and you get a Yoshi costume. You scan in Donkey Kong and you get a Donkey Kong costume. But essentially, you're scanning these Amiibo into a game which is very much like Mario Donkey Kong. It looks like exactly the same mechanics, um, but with a different title here. That came completely free, and I'd say that's one you should download. They say there's 50 levels on it. I just feel like if you already have any Amiibo, that one's worth checking out. Um, then we have another game that I thought about including in the previous section, because this game is also available on the Switch. However, Fatal Frame Maiden of Blackwater is available on the Wii U, free to download, and you can play the first two chapters. If you want the full game, you have to pay $49.99, and that will get you the remaining 15 chapters, as well as four characters and various bonus other content. Like I said, you can get this game on the Switch, but if you just want to try it out, you can play the first two levels here on the Wii U by downloading the game for free from the eShop. The next item I'll mention is not really a game. It's Star Fox Zero The Battle Begins Plus Training. Now, this is a demo for Star Fox Zero, and that's included certainly, but the reason I put it here is there's actually about a 15 minute video relating to Star Fox Zero that's only available if you download this demo. I think it'd be a great thing to watch if you just wanna watch it, but also it's something good to put on in the background if you want your Wii U to have something on other than just a game start menu. I think that one's worth downloading. Uh, two more games on this free list here, free to play, are Zen Pinball 2. The game's free to download. However, if you'd like to have other tables, those will cost you $2.99 to $9.99. Most of the tables look like they were related to superheroes, particularly the Marvel Universe. So if you're interested in playing on pinball tables in the Marvel Universe, maybe consider pickling, picking up some of those DLCs before the eShop goes down. And then finally, we have Tank 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 from Bandai Namco. This is a free game that was also release physical, you'll have to pay for the physical version. This version is free to play. To flush out everything, you have to make microtransactions ranging from $1.99 to $9.99. And I'll let you determine which ones of those are worth picking up. All right, guys, so we're moving into our fourth category. I only have four games in this category. These are games that are very expensive to buy on the Wii U physically. However, if you buy them on the eShop, you can get them for a lot cheaper. The first game is probably going to be familiar to any Wii U collector, and that's Devil's Third. This game is pretty awesome, but it was made very late into the Wii U production cycle, and people just weren't buying Wii U games. For that reason, it's rare, and so it's gone up in price. If you want a loose version of Devil's Third, it's going to cost you $255. If you wanted a complete in box version, it would cost you about $455, whereas you can buy it on the eShop for only $29. $29.99. And honestly, I think unless you're set on getting this physically, if the most important thing to you is just playing this game, maybe consider downloading Devil's Third. The next game on this list is The Book of Unwritten Tales 2. Um, this one will cost you $192 loose. It'll cost you $260 complete in the box. And it'll only cost you $19.99 on the eShop. The third game we have on here is actually a great game. It's Game and Wario. Um, this game is only $29.99 on the eShop, but if you wanted a loose version physical, you'd spend $132. If you wanted a complete in the box version of this game, it'd be $152. I love Wario games, and I know they can get expensive, but it's tough for me personally to palette spending that much on a game that's mainly funny micro games. I mean, if that's your thing, more power to you, but 
I honestly think the eShop's the way to go for that game. And then finally, I've got a game that also appeared on the GameCube. That's the most popular version of it. It's Zelda Twilight Princess. That game will cost you $92 loose. It'll cost you $135 complete in the box. Um, if you wanted it from the eShop, it'll cost you $49.99. I know it's also more expensive on the GameCube, so that may be the best way to buy that one. And that's all I have for you today, guys. I've mentioned games that are Wii U eShop exclusives. I've mentioned games that are available in the Wii U eShop only, but then also available on some other consoles. I've mentioned games that are free to start, but maybe have some DLC. And then I've mentioned games that are really available digitally and physically, but are very expensive to buy physically. And I hope that's helped you to either narrow down your list or possibly grow it. But I hope it's helped you to get in a better place about the Wii U eShop closing, guys. We're, we're in a good place here. You probably have most of what you already want. But there are a few things out there you should consider. And you want to be in a good place before the shop closes. You want to know that you have everything you wanted and everything that you will regret not having. So with that said, I'll leave you. Thanks for tuning in this week. I look forward to seeing you next week. And I'll see you next time, Game Boys and Game Girls.